Good evening, God bless you, and thank you for joining us on our Bible study. This is the Calvary Grace Bible study. Will you bow your heads with me? Precious Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name. Lord, as we turn again to your word, I just pray that you'll bring it from the page, that it'll impact our lives, that we'll be encouraged and strengthened in our faith as we learn from the Old Testament what you've done in the New Testament. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, this is the seventh study in the Old Testament dealing with the Ark of the Covenant. And uh, last week, we looked at the 12 stones that were set up at the crossing of the Jordan River. Tonight, I just felt like we should probably move into part two and deal with the bringing down of the walls of Jericho. Now, both for those that are gathered in this room, we're gonna also show a video of a, an archeologist, a Christian archeologist, who I think is one of the more intelligent of the bunch, who puts out a very good video. Uh, it's 30 minutes long. We'll watch that and then I'll teach the study. But uh, we will put for those that are watching this or listening to this on video, we will put the link in the show notes so that you can click on that onto the more and it will take you to his page and you can watch what we watch there. Will you bow your heads with me as I turn to the word? Father, again, Lord, I come to the word and I pray that you'll lift it from the page. Let it be impactful tonight in Jesus' name, amen. amen. Joshua chapter six. Now Jericho was tightly shut up because of the Israelites. No one went out and no one came in. And then the Lord said to Joshua, see, I have delivered Jericho into your hands, along with its king and its fighting men. March around the city once with all the armed men. Do this for six days. Have seven priests carry trumpets of ram's horns in front of the ark. On the seventh day, march around the city seven times with the priests blowing the trumpets. When you hear them sound a long blast on the trumpets, have all the people give a loud shout. Then the wall of the city will collapse and the people will go up, every man straight in. So Joshua, the son of Nun, called the priests and said to them, take up the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord and have the seven priests carry the trumpets in front of it. And he ordered the people, advance, march around the city with the armed guard going ahead of the Ark of the Lord. And when Joshua had spoken to the people, the seven priests carrying the seven trumpets before the Lord went forward, blowing their trumpets, and the Ark of the Lord's Covenant followed them. The army guard marched ahead of the priests and blew the trumpets near the rear, and the rear guard followed the Ark. At this time, the trumpets were sounding, but Joshua had commanded the people, do not give a war cry, do not raise your voices, do not say a word until the day I tell you to shout. Then shout. So he had the ark of the Lord carried around the city, circling it once. And then the people returned to the camp and spent the night. Joshua got up early the next morning and the priests took up the ark of the Lord. The seven priests carrying the seven trumpets went forward, marching before the ark of the Lord for the Lord, uh, uh, Ark of the Lord, and blowing the trumpets. The armed men went ahead of them, and the rear guard followed the Ark of the Lord while the trumpets kept blowing. On the second day, they marched around the city once and returned to the camp. They did this for six days. On the seventh day, they got up at daybreak and marched around the city seven times in the same manner 
except that on that day, they circled the city seven times. The seventh time around, when the priests sounded the trumpet blast, Joshua commanded the people, shout, for the Lord has given you the city. And the city and all that's in it are to be devoted to the Lord. Only Rahab the prostitute and all who are with her in her house will, shall be spared because she hid the spies we sent out. But keep away from the devoted things so it will not bring about your own destruction by taking any of them. Otherwise, you will make the camp of Israel liable to destruction and bring trouble on it. All the silver and the gold articles of bronze and iron are sacred to the Lord and must go into his treasury. When the trumpet sounded, the people shouted. And the sound of the Lord, the sound of the trumpet, when the people gave a sh loud shout, the wall collapsed so that every man charged straight in and they took the city. They devoted the city to the Lord and destroyed all with a sword, every living uh, thing in it, men and women, young and old, cattle and sheep and donkeys. Joshua said to the men who had spied out the land, go into the prostitute's house and bring her out and all who belong to her in accordance with your oath to her. So the young men who had done the, the spying went in and bought out Rahab, her father and mother and brothers and all that belonged to her. And they bought out the entire family and put them in a place outside the camp of Israel. Then they burned the whole city with everything in it. But they put the silver and the gold and the articles of bronze and iron into the treasury of the Lord's house. But Joshua spared Rahab, the prostitute, and her family, and all who belonged to her, because she hid the, the men Joshua had sent as spies to Jericho. And she lives among the Israelites to this day. At that time, Joshua pronounced a solemn oath. Cursed before the Lord is the man who undertakes to rebuild Jericho the cost of his firstborn he'll lay its foundations and the cost of his youngest he will set up its gates so the Lord was with Joshua and his fame spread throughout the land we're now going to show you the latest archaeology of this area as I told you last week when I went there back in the 1970s the guide that was taking us through who had taken a, a degree in archaeologist told us that the walls of Jericho A did not exist and B that they never fell. That this was just a Bible story made up. You can guess that she was not a practicing Christian or a practicing Jew. I'll leave the rest to your imagination. What you're going to see tonight is definitive proof that this happened exactly as the Bible says. Because of the Israelites. If you knew there was an enemy at your gates, you'd shut the door. That's exactly what they did. None went out and none came in. And the Lord said to Joshua, see I have delivered Jericho into your hands along with its king and its fighting men. <coughs> what you saw tonight was the physical remains of Jericho. But imagine what it would be like to be transported to the walls of Jericho. They were real. They were tangible. They were as real as the chairs that you're sitting in. And then hear that God has given you the victory. Maybe that's how come we can sing victory in Jesus though there are times when we don't really feel like this victory in Jesus. <coughs> March around the city once with all the armed men. We're going to deal with that little statement in a minute. Do this for six days. Have seven priests carry seven trumpets of ram's horns in the front of the ark. Now, I... I 
was paying close attention tonight, maybe you were too, but I noticed in the graphics they had ram's horns that were wrapped with silver and they were, uh, they were showing very beautiful ram's horns. That's not what this is. These are very crude instruments, known, by the way, in Hebrew as the shofar. They were not wrapped with silver. They didn't have little beautiful cords hanging from them and all the rest of the accoutrements. And as a matter of fact, there were trumpets in Israel that were made of solid silver. But these are not those trumpets. These are the trumpets of the ram's horn. You'll see more about that in a minute. On the seventh day, march around the city seven times with the priests blowing the trumpets. Can you imagine being inside the city and seeing this small army of people coming around with their box, their Ark of the Covenant, and the trumpets blowing? And they did it every day for seven days. And then on the seventh day, it went absolutely barmy. Everything went crazy as they start to walk around now seven times around the city. Take your Bibles and turn to Judges chapter 7, verse 15. Judges chapter 7, verse 15. When Gideon heard the dream and its interpretation, he worshiped God. He returned to the camp of Israel and called out, Get up! The Lord has given the Midianite camp into your hands. Dividing the 300 men into three companies, he placed trumpets and empty jars in the hands of them with torches inside. Watch me, he told them, follow my lead. When I get to the edge of the camp, do exactly as I do. And when I and all who are with me blow the trumpets, then from around the camp blow yours and shout for the Lord and for Gideon. And Gideon and the hundred men with him reached the edge of the camp at the beginning of the middle watch, just after they had changed, or pardon me, has changed the guard. And they blew the trumpets and broke the jars that were in their hands. The three companies blew the trumpets and smashed the jars, grasping the torches in their left hands and holding in their right the hands the trumpets. And they were to, that they were to blow and they shouted, a sword for the Lord and for Gideon. While each man held his position around the camp, the Midianites ran crying out as they fled. And when the 300 trumpets sounded, the Lord caused the men throughout the camp to turn on each other with their swords. The army fled to Beth uh, uh, Shittah toward Zirah, as far as the border of Abel Mehola near Tibet. What you have here is you have the trumpets being blown and God giving the victory. Amen. When you see trumpets in the Bible, it's a harbinger of victory. It's a statement that here comes victory. Amen. I remember in the old days when uh, uh, old programs of, 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 of windows would start up, you'd get this Da da da! They, they actually had a trumpet kind of sound in there, and then it would come up and it would be just a wonderful thing. Here was Windows. That was in the dark days before we realized Mac. Well, all through the Bible, trumpets are blown to signify victory. Here it is victory, finally. Blow the trumpet. Turn to 1 Corinthians 15, verse 5. Actually, make that 1 Corinthians 15, verse 50. 1 Corinthians 15, 50. I declare to you, brothers, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. Listen, I will tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep, but we will all be changed in a flash in the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised 
imperishable and we will be changed. For the perishable must clothe itself with the imperishable and the mortal with immortality. And when the perishable has been clothed with the imperishable and the mortal with immortality, then the saying has come true. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Oh, death, where is your victory? Oh, death, where is your sting? The sting of death is sin and the power of death is the law. But thanks be to God, he gives us victory, victory, victory. Notice the word through the Lord Jesus Christ. What's happening here? The trumpet is blowing and the victory is finally ours and the dead now are raised up out of the ground. Trumpets indicate impending victory. Here it is. The trumpet is blowing. Jump over to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16 for a moment. 1 Thessalonians 4, 16, for the Lord himself. 1 Thessalonians 4, 16, for the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command or a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trumpet call of God. Do you realize God's a musician? Amen. You want to be more godly? Learn to play the trumpet. The trumpet call of God and the dead in Christ will rise first. After that, we who are still alive and left will be caught up together with them in the air or in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we'll be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. One day we'll hear that trumpet call and it means victory. It means it's over. No more hurt, no more pain, no more sickness, no more disease, no more war, no more evil. And we will be taken up out of this domain to a new place, absent from the earth and present with the Lord. We are looking forward to the trumpet call of God. Somebody say amen. amen. Back to Joshua chapter 6 verse 5. When you hear them sound a long blast on the trumpets, have all the people give a loud shout. So they would take the shofar and they would blow a very long blast. Now, by the way, they had been blowing the, trump the trumpets, the shofar, every day for six days. And on the seventh day, boy, I wonder if that means anything. Six days, seventh day. On the seventh day, he rested. On the seventh day here, he brings victory. And it just turns out that in our New Testament, on the seventh day, Jesus healed of somebody. And everybody got terribly upset that he healed somebody on the Sabbath day. When you hear the sound, a long blast on the trumpets, have all the people give a loud shout. Then the wall of the city will collapse and the people will go up, every man straight into it. Now, I, I showed you what I believe is a very quality production of a brilliant archaeologist. He has a number of very good things online. I highly recommend him. But there's a lot of nonsense on YouTube too. There's a lot of real rubbish. I know because I'm on there. And one of the uh, files that I looked at some time ago was these flying saucer guys that believe that what happened here was that God levitated the walls, levitated the bricks on the sound. So that as they blew those trumpets, gravity was somehow defeated and the walls came apart because of that sound of the trumpets. Oh, they also believe, by the way, that's how the pyramids were built. Those big massive stones were vibrated and therefore floated into place. And I can't but help think what stupid nonsense that is. 
I, I was talking to somebody, uh, a, a doctor friend of mine, just a couple of days ago. I went to see him. Beautiful Christian man, lovely. And he was saying he and his wife were given tickets to a, to a, 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 a game of some kind, football or hockey or whatever. And he said it was really a, a thrilling game. It was very interesting and uh, it was wonderful to see. And he really enjoyed it. But he said the sound was so loud, the building, you know, it was just vibrating in the building. Well, I have to think that probably that number of people shouting, if it doesn't bring down a building today, why would it bring down a building then? I do not believe this had anything to do with the level of sound, but what it had to do with was the obedience to God. God said, I have given it to you. Be obedient and shout. And when they were obedient and they shouted, God did his part. Amen. Sometimes you do your part and God will do his part. So Joshua, the son of Nun, called the priests and said to them, take up the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord. Here goes our Ark. Now remember, this thing is a representation of the presence of the Lord. It will be a forerunner for the Lord himself. It will be a forerunner for Emmanuel, God with us. And everybody in the camp that would look at that thing and even sing it covered as it was under a blue tarp, a blue covering, would say to themselves, God is with us. God is with us. We don't worship that box, but God is with us. Take up the covenant of the Lord, the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord, and the seven priests carried the trumpets in front of it. And he ordered the people, advance, march around the city with the armed guard going ahead of the Ark of the Lord. Take your Bibles and turn to Deuteronomy chapter 20, verse 1. Deuteronomy chapter 20, verse 1. When you go to war against your enemies and see horses and chariots and an army greater than yours, don't be afraid of them. Amen. You know, there are sometimes you're facing an enemy, a tangible, a real enemy, somebody that wills you evil. The Bible says, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid because the Lord your God who bought you up out of Egypt will be with you. Right. Amen. Emmanuel, God with us. And we are about to go into the battle. The priest shall come forward and address the army and he shall say, Shema Israel, hear O Israel. Today you're going to battle against your enemies. Do not be faint-hearted or afraid. Do not be terrified or give way to panic before them. For the Lord your God is the one who goes with you to fight for you against your enemies to give you victory. For six days, you're to march around blowing these trumpets, the signal of victory. The first time around, I imagine the people in the city thought they were a bit crazy. The second time around, they thought they were probably really crazy. And then the third, the fourth, the fifth, the sixth, nothing's happening. They're blowing the trumpets. They don't see the victory. And sometimes you don't see the victory right away. Right. Sometimes you just got to hang in there. But then on that seventh day, yes. Amen. they marched around seven times. And I'm telling you, God bought the walls down. God bought them victory. Joshua chapter 6, verse 8. When Joshua had spoken to the people, the seven priests carrying the seven trumpets before the Lord went forward, blowing the trumpets, and the ark of the Lord's covenant followed them. So what we have here is a procession. We have the armed guards going first. We have the musicians coming second. And thirdly, we have the Ark of the Covenant. And the armed guard marched 
ahead of the priests who blew the trumpets. And the rear guard followed the ark. There was an ark, a guard behind them. All the time the trumpets were sounding. So when they were walking around the first day, the second day, the third day, and so on, it was not that they just gave a little blow on the trumpet at a certain point. Everybody stop, okay, blow your trumpets, and then we carry on. They blew the trumpets all the time. Sometimes you've got to sound victory and stay with it in spite of what the devil's trying to do. In Joshua chapter 8, Going a couple of chapters forward, Joshua chapter 8, verse 1. The Lord said to Joshua, Do not be afraid, do not be discouraged. Take the whole army with you and go up and attack Ai. For I have delivered it into your hands, the, the king of Ai and his people uh, and his city. You shall do to Ai as the king uh, and its king as you do to Jericho with its king, except that you may carry off their plunder and livestock for yourselves. Set an ambush behind the city. So Joshua and the whole army moved out to attack Ai. He chose 30,000 men of the best fighting men and sent them out at night. I wanted you to see this because this comes out of the book of Joshua. It comes not only out of the book of Joshua, it comes two chapters later. And so what we realize here is maybe how big this group was that was marching around Jericho. If he could pull 30,000 of the best fighting men, how many men were there? This wasn't just a few priests and a couple of armed guards. This was a large contingent. And by the way, the city of Jericho is not that big. I would compare it to perhaps Lohid Mall, approximately that size. It was not difficult to walk around, all except for the fact that it was built on top of a hill. That's what a tell is, it's a hill. And they would be walking around the lowland below it. But we're talking here about probably close to 100,000 people walking around. Can you imagine what it was like as you look down over those walls and you see them coming past with their box and the trumpets continue to blow? Boy, that would be unnerving. You know, I have an alarm in my bedroom and I'm not gonna say the Alexa word, but it is that. And anybody listening to this, we just triggered their devices. Amen. Alexa, tell the gospel story. But her alarm will go off until you tell her to stop. And if it's four hours, it'll be four hours. It'll just continue going. It gets unnerving after a while. Can you imagine what it was like to hear all these trumpets blowing different notes? hour after hour as the 100,000 or so men are walking around the city. And then on the seventh day, six times, they hear the footprints of the soldiers marching by. Joshua chapter 6, verse 10, But Joshua had commanded the people, Do not give a war cry, don't raise your voices, don't say a word until I tell you to shout, and then shout. Do you know how hard it is to make people be quiet? If somebody says, okay, don't say a thing, somebody's gonna whisper to somebody. Nobody whisper. Nobody say anything. I want absolute silence. And they did this every day for six days and on the seventh day, they did it seven times. Seven in the Bible is a very specific number. It is the number of perfection. It is absolutely the number of something that is complete and done and perfect. 
No addition needs to be made to it. And by the way, when you do put another one with it, making it an eight, eight is the number of new beginnings, and so on. But seven is a complete number and a complete set. And that's what's being portrayed here. The blowing of the shofar, victory. The number of times complete and perfect it will be an utter destruction God has given the city you remember what Rahab said as the spies came to her she said listen we know what your God did at the Red Sea they didn't even realize at that stage that it was going to happen at the Jordan but they knew what was going to happen what had happened at the Red Sea 40 years earlier and they said our hearts melted within us when we saw you guys heading our ways. Imagine how their hearts felt as they heard all of this blowing of a shofar and marching of the troops. Joshua chapter 6 verse 10, but Joshua had commanded the people don't give a war cry, nobody going whoop whoop whoop, nothing. Do not raise your voices, you know who you are, and do not say a word, you also know who you are, until the day I tell you, then let her rip, shout. So he had the ark of the Lord carried around the city, circling it. Then the people returned to the camp and spent the night there. And Joshua got up early the next morning and the priests took up the ark of the Lord. Seven priests carrying seven trumpets went forward, marching before the ark of the Lord and blowing the trumpets and the armed men went ahead of them with, and at the rear guard followed the ark of the Lord while the trumpets kept blowing. On the second day, they marched around the city once and returned to the camp and they did this for six days. On the seventh day, they got up at the daybreak and they marched around the city seven times in the same manner, except that on that day, they circled the city seven times. The seventh time around. Naaman dip in the water seven times. Seventh time around. That's the time when victory comes. The seventh time around when the priest sounded the trumpet blast, Joshua commanded the people, shout! For the Lord has given you the city. What an insane command. Wouldn't you think that was a bit daft? Try going to your bank and shouting. For the Lord has given you a million dollars. I mean, wouldn't it just be nice if we could just shout at our problems? Of course, there's a lot of marriages where they try that. But you see, it wasn't the shout, it was the obedience. Right. That's what was the important thing. You do what God tells you to do, and God will come through with his part of the deal. The city and all that's in it are to be devoted to the Lord. Only Rahab the prostitute and all that are with her and her house will be spared because she hid the spies we sent. But keep away from the devoted things so that you'll not bring about destruction by taking any of them. Otherwise, you'll make the camp of Israel liable to destruction and bring trouble on it. Now, I don't have time to go into this. We are already quite a bit behind tonight. But here's what happens. There is a man by the name of Achan who gets his eyes on some of the plunder. There's actually quite a bit to it because he looks at the Babylonish robe. And the Babylonish robe is the priestly robes of Babylon. And then he looks at the silver and he takes a few things back to his tent and he buries them under his tent. Who's going to know? Nobody's going to know. But God knew. Israel then went after the next city. They'd taken Jericho. 
This was an amazing thing. They went after the next city called <coughs> Ai. And Ai was a little of a city. They should have trumped it. They should have wiped it out. In fact, they only sent a few troops. They didn't even bother to send the full army. They just sent a few because it was such a piddly little town. And Ai whooped them. And they came back. And Joshua said, why God, why, why, why has this happened? And God reveals that somebody in the camp sinned, there's sin in the camp. At that point, God brings about a way to find the man who hid these things in his tent. These belonged to the Lord. Don't ever take that which belongs to the Lord. Don't take his portion. Don't take his things. You say glory belongs to the Lord, not to you. And most certainly not to me. All the glory belongs to him. They had taken what belonged to the Lord and they were no longer able to win the battle. When they set it straight and Ai, uh, pardon me, and uh, uh, Achan and his family were killed as a result of this to the third and fourth generation, as God had said, once that had been set straight, they then went back and they just walked all over Ai. It didn't, didn't even trouble them. Verse 19, the silver and the gold articles of bronze and iron are sacred to the Lord and must go into his treasury. You don't take the silver or the gold from the Lord or the bronze or the iron. It belongs to him. This is the, this is the tithe on coming into the land. This is the first fruits of the land. You give this to the Lord. And when the trumpet sounded, the people shouted. And at the sound of the trumpet, when the people gave a loud shout, the wall collapsed. Could you imagine? Standing back as the walls now start to tumble down. I realized after watching this man's video, incidentally, that when I was there and they were doing the, doing the excavations on Jericho, what they had shown us as proof that the walls did not come down was the outer retaining wall. They neglected to mention the brick walls that did come down. And they took a vicious pleasure in trying to tell us our Bible is not correct. I'm afraid it is correct. And we have the evidence. So every man charged straight in. And they took the city. They devoted the city to the Lord and destroyed with a sword every living thing, men, women, young and old, cattle, sheep, and donkeys. And Joshua said to the two men who had spied out the land, go into the prostitute's house, probably the only place in the Bible that's said, go into the prostitute's house and bring her out with all that belonged to her in accordance with your own oath to her. So the young men who had done the spying went in and bought Rahab, her father and mother and brothers and all that belonged to her and they bought out the entire family and put them in a place outside the camp. Now listen, this last week at church here, we talked about Passover, Pesach, Passover. And all that were under the blood were saved. Their firstborn did not die. But if somebody scoffed at that and said, it's insane, I'm not going to kill a little lamb for... For the fun of it and put the blood on the doorpost said don't be don't be silly that's that's just crazy the death angel came to them well here's the next story the story of rahab the harlot for she took a red cord and hung it out the window and all that were in her house were saved if they said well that's just insane you know, we're, we're, we're not coming to your place. Don't be silly. That's our bath day. That's where we're not coming to. We're not coming over to your house. 
We're already nervous about all the nonsense going on outside the city and the crazy trumpets are driving us mad. They died. But all that were in her house under the red cord lived. There is a line of blood all the way through the Bible to the cross. They burned the city and everything in it, and they put the silver and the gold articles of bronze and iron into the treasury of the Lord's house. But Joshua spared Rahab, the prostitute, and her family and all that belonged to her because she had hid the men. Joshua sent as spies to Jericho. And she lives among the Israelites to this day. At that time, Joshua pronounced a solemn oath, cursed before the Lord as the man that undertakes to rebuild the city of Jericho. I hope you noticed it's not rebuilt. It wasn't rebuilt. What you saw there was Jericho as it is today. Now, I will tell you there is a new Jericho. A few miles from ancient Jericho. It's a wonderful place. It's filled with cats. Hundreds and hundreds of cats. I had lunch there with my friends. Well, old Jericho remains in ruins. At that time, Joshua pronounced a solemn oath, cursed before the Lord as the man that undertakes to rebuild the city of Jericho. At the cost of his firstborn son, he'll lay its foundations, and at the cost of his youngest son, he'll set up its gates. So the Lord was with Joshua, and his fame spread throughout the land. Turn to Revelation chapter 19. Verse 11. I saw heaven standing open, and there before me was a white horse whose rider is called Faithful and True. With justice he judges and makes war. His eyes are like blazing fire, and on his head are many crowns. He has a name written on him that no one knows except but he himself. He is dressed in a robe dipped in blood, and his name is the Word of God. The armies of heaven were following him, riding on white horses, dressed in fine linen, white and clean. And out of his mouth comes a sharp sword with which to strike down the nations. He will rule them with an iron scepter. He treads the winepress of the fury and the wrath of God Almighty. And on his robe and on his thigh, he has a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. You see, the trumpets were blowing, indicating an impending victory. You know, the trumpets are going to blow when Jesus is revealed. I see this as a picture of the final coming of the Lord. There is the ark representing the presence of the Lord. The armed guards are around it just as when Jesus comes. There was blood on the ark as there was blood on his robe, pictured here in Revelation 19. And our victory, well, that's kind of twofold. Go to Revelation 20, verse 1. One chapter over. I saw an angel coming down out of heaven, and he had the key of the abyss, and holding it in his, and holding in his hand a great chain. He seized the devil, that ancient serpent, who is this, the devil or Satan, and bound him for a thousand years, and threw him into the abyss, and locked and sealed it over him to keep him from deceiving the nations anymore until a thousand years were ended. And after that, he must be set free for a short time. Jump down to verse 7. And when the thousand years were over, Satan will be released from his prison and will go out and deceive the nations in the four corners of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them for battle. In number, they're like the sand of the seashore. They march across the breadth of the earth and surrounded the camp of God's people, the city he loves. But fire came down from heaven and devoured them. And the devil who deceived them was thrown into the lake of burning sulfur where the beast and the false prophet had been thrown, and they were tormented day and night forever and ever. What we have here is the trumpet is blown. The children of God are taken up into heaven. And the final thing here is the return of the Lord at the end. And the victory starts to roll. First thing, the coming back of the Lord on the white horse. Second thing, 
Satan will be judged and thrown into hell, never again to torment anybody. And the third thing we get out of this victory is Revelation 21, verse 1. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and there was no longer any sea. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride, beautifully dressed for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Now is the dwelling of God with men, and he will live with them, and they will be his people, and God himself will be with them, and he will be their God. And he will wipe away every tear. What tugs at your heartstrings? He will wipe away every tear. And there'll be no more death, no more mourning, no more crying, no more pain. And let me add, no more depression, no more sadness, no more sickness. For the old order of things has passed away. And he who was seated on the throne said, I am making everything new. And they said, write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. And he said to me, it's done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To him who is thirsty, I will give a drink without cost from the spring of the water of life. He who overcomes will inherit all this. And I'll be his God. And he'll be my son. Amen. Praise God. The story of the Ark of the Covenant is only just beginning. We will look next week. I'm not even going to tell you about that. Just be excited. Amen. Well, may God bless you. Will you bow your heads with me? Precious Lord, in Jesus' name, I just pray over your people that their hearts are stimulated to follow you, to obey, do as you've told them to do. For we know, Father, that when we obey, you will do exactly as you've said you will do. You make a way. No weapon formed against us will prosper. You open doors, you close doors. You bring about victory. Father, let the trumpets be blown for your people. The trumpet of victory. Father, there's no person in here that isn't in some way facing a situation they need victory in. Father God, let the trumpets be blown in Zion. Let your people have victory in Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen.